Thanks for joining me, guys, through what's probably for, for all of us a very uncertain time, to say the least. And is it okay to feel afraid right now? Is it okay to feel a great deal of unease, probably? Of course it's okay. Of course it's okay to feel like that. It's a very normal thing to feel. And what I'm going to talk about in this video is how we can navigate this uncertain period maybe a little bit better. And uh, I've, I've written the word stress up here because it's important to stay informed about the, the current situation. Of course it is. And to check news maybe if you, if you want to check the news. And we, we were kind of constantly vigilant about what's happening outside. And what's happening inside is for a lot of us, stress is building up. And I'm going to talk about the effects that stress has on, of course, your mental health, but on your immune system. And I'm going to kind of make a case here for, okay, stay informed, don't be in denial about what's going on outside. But if we can start to reduce the stress levels throughout this entire experience, there is enormous benefit for us in that, not only in terms of our mental health, but also our physical health and our immune system. To kind of drive that point forward or home, I want to say, just for imagine hypothetically, just imagine that there was no external situation going on right, th right now, okay? Uh, the, the news and all that changes and nothing's happening. It's hypothetically. But in this hypothetical situation, you still have stress. Well, what will happen is, I'm going to talk about what will happen. And if we can just focus for a minute, forget the external situation, and just focus on what happens in my body, to my health, to my emotional well-being, when I experience prolonged stress. Short bursts, bursts of stress are fine. The human body is very, very capable of handling short-term stress. Long-term stress, we are not good at and it's something that we, we could work on. It's a huge benefits if we can get that sorted. So it's, of course, do what you can, follow the guidelines people are putting out there. I'm not a health expert. I'm not telling anybody. I, I would tell people to follow guidelines really on this and, and be sensible about this, you know. What, what I am super interested in is how we can remain sort of calm and reduce low level, low, have low levels of stress throughout this entire thing. Firstly, what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk over, over here a few practical things. But here, I'm going to talk about, okay, well, imagine if I am feeling stress and I'm, I'm, I'm allowed, maybe I'm checking news sites every 15 minutes and the stress is building as, as a result of that. Well, what is that doing inside my body if stress is going up? First thing here, guys, is antibodies. So the role of antibodies in, in your body, in your immune system, is to actually go in and identify and remove foreign invaders or foreign uh, intruders into the body. So super important, these antibodies, but when the body experiences stress, especially, in fact, in short-term stress, your body's immune system goes up. So short-term stress is not, a, not an issue. Everyone knows that regular exercise, for instance, is a good thing for your immune system. And that's a body, a stressor to your body, but long-term stress, what psychologists call an anticipatory stress. Stress about an, an imagined scenario happening in the future, that type of stress. Cortisol levels go up. And what happens is the production of these antibodies goes down. So it's, it's the last thing you want to do is build up high level, levels of stress for your immune system. Your immune system will be really bolstered by the, if you can leave the, the stress somewhat low, okay? especially over long periods of time. It's okay to get triggered, it's okay to get afraid, but try not to, and I'll talk in a few minutes about how we can maybe do this a bit better. But don't let the stress stay in your body for too long. This advice I'm talking about here, particularly for all of us, it applies to all of us, but the type A personality, the person who is maybe always feeling time restricted and busy all the time, and, those things for the sake of doing things, right? One of the aspects of the type A personality is often they're quite uh, emotionally volatile and they're maybe quick to get angry or upset. Type A personalities, um, often one of the aspects of it is uh, the quick to anger part of it. And type A personality, if they do have that quick to anger thing 
or to have a strong emotional responses to external situations or, or stimulus is it's really good, bad for cardiovascular health. So prolonged stress for the type A personality it shows up in. Some studies have shown that it's the type A personality, if it has this aspect to it, the hostility like that, it can be worse for your, your, your cardiovascular system, your heart system than smoking regularly or obesity. Okay, so really what we're beginning to, so much research is done on this now, showing that stress is a huge, huge aspect of health. Okay, Hans Selye back in the 30s, I think it was, well, that's when he started his career anyway, did all this research into, into stress. And since then, there's been reams of research on this. Another thing that shows that uh, stress is very, very important in terms of our health is what it does to digestion. So when you get stressed, prolonged stress, anticipatory stress, for a lot of people, it'll, it'll eventually start to go into their digestive system and you, they might get uh, develop ulcers. Really what's happening with ulcers is the bacteria in the stomach isn't being generated anymore and that bacteria is used for to repair the body. So you'll know yourself if you ever feel stressed, maybe you're given a speech or something that your, your mouth gets dry and you, you lose your appetite. So digestion is, is suppressed during this and the absorption of food, if we're in prolonged stress, goes down. We don't get the nutrients from the food that we normally do and that's very detrimental for our immune system, again, if it's prolonged. So with all of that said, there's other things too. I mean, think about it. Um, one thing we know, growth hormone goes down when we're in prolonged stress. We get, there's hair loss, there's high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, all these things. Very detrimental for our health. So I hope I've made the point here because it's not me making the point. There's reams, as I said, of research on this that say when stress is prolonged for long periods of time, anticipatory stress, your immune system gets suppressed. So what if we just focus or at least put some of our focus, I would say a lot of our focus into, let's just try to remain calm. Let's just see if I can practice daily things that will keep my stress levels low and it'll do wonders for my health. Of course, I'll stay informed and I'll do any practical things that are sensible, but really that's not that complicated. You know, what is more complicated is the human body's response to stress because so many of us are experiencing it and it's a normal thing. But good news on this, is that your body, when you start to get a handle on stress, if there has been any suppressed immunity or anything like that, your body is remarkably good at coming back, at restoring its health and building up its immune system again. It's very, very quick to do that. So a few things I would say are, I'm gonna put this over here in blue. These are like more practical things that we can start to think about, right? first of them is to just become aware so when we're re watching the news or watching tv or reading articles or on twitter or we're doing whatever we're doing you know become aware of okay i'm going to be informed but the, what's in my control right now what's a super important thing for me is this not to be experiencing too much stress in all of this and if i become aware of it I'm gonna say, I'm gonna to start to take practical measures now. I'm gonna find something in my life that helps me with stress. And that could be, you know, practical things. I'll talk about some of those now as well, but find some kind of an approach for yourself. I mean, I'm working on online courses and those courses are designed to help a lot of my clients with this, the different various stressors that they feel. And I'm actually working on a new approach um, Medicine therapy, it's an entire approach to stress. And uh, that, so that's just an example, really. But find something to, be, to become aware of how important this issue is, and I'm gonna start doing things for it, right? The news, okay? I'm gonna talk about checking the news. So if, again, there's nothing wrong with checking the news, it's good to be informed. But before you check the news, maybe just check, check the news mindfully. Okay, before I, I go online, okay, I'm gonna do some breathing and remind myself the purpose of this is to just stay informed so that I can, I can help myself stay safe and help my community. And then after the news, just say, okay, that was, that was an intense experience. Okay, 
that news was. You can say it was bad news, you can say it's good news, whatever it is. But just do it mindfully and then just breathe after that and make sure that you check in with your body after you check the news. And maybe if you're checking the news, you know, too many times every day, scale that back. Stay informed, but just scale it back a little bit. Another thing I'm going to talk about here is related to this, and it's the, the, the type of media that we're, we're checking, okay? So anyone who is talking about doom, okay? Now, this point I'm going to make here is, I'm not saying in this video everything's great, okay? But what I am saying is, I personally can't predict the future, and... I bet most of the people watching this video, if they're honest with themselves, will agree that they too cannot predict the future. So anybody who says that they can predict the future and they're making very, very negative claims about that or positive claims, but certainly this negative thing, because this is going to feed into stress. And for you, you should be watching out for this. Anyone who says that they can predict the future, I would just say, well, no, no, nobody can predict the future. Okay. So if I, and, I, and I apply that to myself, right? It's okay to say that about someone else as long as you can say it about yourself. I cannot predict the future. I cannot predict any doomsday scenario here and I'm not gonna try. So I would suggest anyone that's doing that, just, okay, interesting, and maybe move away from that. That would be my suggestion on that. Nobody can predict the future and everybody, when we get into that thing of predicting the future, oftentimes it can be castro um, pretty thing catastrophe okay nobody can other things we can do uh is start to use this time maybe if you're if you're um isolating yourself for self-care self-care is important right now and self-care not self-scare <laughs> self-care is important right now so it's like I'm, I'm moving into new routines, maybe my, maybe I'm working from home, maybe different things. How am I going to do things, schedule things in my day that are going to make me feel good? Remember, I'm aware of the issue now and stress is the thing to keep myself calm because it's a healthy thing. One of the healthiest things I can do for myself. So self-care, um, also what you can start to do is, you know, if you're, if you're carrying any negative emotions in your body, even unrelated to that, just to get curious about those things. If you're going through a hard time in your relationships, any of those things, maybe just spend some time with the emotional blocks that are there as well. Self-soothing, things like that. And also the self-care thing. In my, my course I do on procrastination, self-care is, is one of the, the, the most important parts of that in terms of if I'm going to be in my home and maybe I'm working from home, uh, it's to really look and master self-care because it's one of the most important things in maintaining productivity. It's an essential aspect to maintain productivity. And the final thing I'm gonna talk about in terms of this is more in terms of a sense of community and it's to be, it's to be grateful. So, Talking about the people in your community, right? People are out there. Just, it's just such a healthy thing to, to, to recognize that there are people around you that are giving of themselves. And for us to, in any way we can ourselves, help if it's appropriate. So many people out there, you know, they're still working in shops. Um, obviously medical staff and hospitals, things like this, right? There's, there's so many people. People are still going around taking people's trash out every day. So much gratitude for those people that are doing these things. And to maintain that sense of perspective on there is a lot of love out there in the world and there's a lot of really great people. And if we maintain this gratitude, it'll build, build a sense of community. And it's one of the best things we can do in any adversity that we face is to maintain gratitude and a sense of connection to people around us, even when we're isolated, okay? So I'm gonna leave it there, but those are a few of the things. I really think that the news thing is important right now for a lot of us because we are isolated and we're coming to terms with that. And a lot of our time can be spent online uh, checking the news every 10, 15 minutes or something. Just do it mindfully, do it consciously, okay? With the goal of I'm going to leave my stress levels low. Take care of yourself. 
reach out to people, connect, show gratitude. Maybe if you do have to go to the supermarket or something like that, to show gratitude for people because it's a very, very healthy thing you can do for yourself. It makes you feel connected and stress levels go down because of that. So I just want you to remember, it's normal to feel fear, guys. Being, being upset by anything is never the problem itself. We all get upset by different things and we can all experience fear. So we can start to proactively do things to minimize how long stress stays in our body. And it's one of the healthiest things we can do for ourselves in this period of time. So um, thanks so much for watching and uh, stay safe out there, be sensible and take care of yourself. Really take care of yourself because you have so much control over this. And it's one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself. I'll leave it there for now, guys, but uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.